Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode Marty 62, Croft. I believe, <laughs> Three Virtues Podcast. Welcome. I'm Mr. Marty Groff. I'm I'm LJ. I'm Marty Groff. I mean, uh, Tenebrae Invictus. I'm Ian. I'm unlovable. I'm Air of the Chronicler, and the H is silent. It's Air. Uh, hair, hair. I'm hair of the chronicler. Yeah, hair. That was a joke that was being did quite a lot last episode. <laughs> or was it? No, he, he's just a hairy chronicler. That too. I mean, I'm not denying that, but just letting you know. That's what we got going on. Yeah. It's weak. Man. Or a week, two weeks. However, everyone's been. Mm-hmm. Oh, My week oh. has been really good. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely nothing happened. Oh, yeah? No. Yeah, Yeah, you sure about that? I'm very sure about that. Anything specific that's been good? Just vague assumptions of good? Um, yeah, um, that one assumption was pretty good. There was another assumption that I found was pretty good. Uh, this vague detail over here was also quite enjoyable. I really enjoyed that part. Um, I went to this vague place and did a vague thing. You watched this vague video called Legends of Chima Episode 3. How about Legends of Chima? That was that. <laughs> some monstrosity. <laughs> I was going down on some I, vague control, but... I know. didn't watch the... I didn't watch the Legends of Chima video, but I did watch the uh, Brain Attack video, so... I Great. guess that's just... Is that better or worse? Brain Attack is far, 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 far better than Chima. Uh-huh. But, but it doesn't not have furries in it. Same league. Well... <laughs> That's yeah. Well, okay then. Var's life's been vague. LJ, what about you? Well, I've. It's been interesting. Kahi has relentlessly continued to annoy everyone he knows or associates with. So, I guess it's been pretty normal. Yeah. Mm. He ditched me. He ditched me, and my whole empire fell. All my villagers were dead. Ugh. You had an empire? This well, as it. much as you were talking about your vague life, that could have been a specific. Yeah. Yeah, so Barton Hollow fell. Not, not sure if you guys ever heard of it. It's called Age of Empires online. Age of Empires, baby. I have that. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. People still play that? that? that yeah, apparently. <laughs> we were playing the online <laughs> one. It was, yeah, it, 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 it's called Age of Empires online. It's a newer version of the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was Kai and Var against Mage and uh, Five or something? LJ. And I. Gotcha. Uh, he ditched him mid game, and well, you know the results. Instant death. Mm-hmm. Wasn't all that instant. You held your own. Well, yeah, it wasn't. Well, eh. <laughs> I could have won. I could have won had I attacked them. Well, Kai, because Kai built a wonder, and that usually wins the game in like a t- specific amount of time. But. Yeah, I took too long to attack, and thus I died instantly, and it was pretty terrible. Was it instant? It was pretty instant, dude. It was pretty instant. Yeah, it was. I, I have he, literally he did not defend very much. I do not know what to make of you guys' games, because I'm barely there for them. But it's a fun game. I recommend to anyone who likes free games, because it's completely free to play it, because it's quite... It a- wasn't at one point, but it is now. Yeah. Hmm. But, it's funny how you... It's funny how you advocate for it, because you hate it so much. I do not. He hates it. Just trolling me, I know, because I do not hate the game. <laughs> he hates that game. Every time we try to play it, he's like, I don't want to play AoE. AoE sucks. I hate AoE. Can you prove- I'm going to ask a question. Okay. I'm going to walk away. Okay. What platform do you play it on? PC. PC. Damn it. <laughs> it's the only platform. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I thought it was, um... Online exclusive for a console or something. I don't know. New thing or something. Nah, it was, yeah, it's for PC. Although it uses games yeah. Windows, which is like yeah. Xbox Live for the computer. Who's the purse convision? Oh my god, what? Who's purse convision? I don't know. I guess Who you, is I, I guess you should have said, I just said random dude. I guess you should have specified oh. that you have a guest with you again. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Your guest. Sorry. You never oh, know. right. My neighbor, Dylan, has decided to join us. Yeah. Because he's got something better to do. And, and turn four, <laughs> as usual, with Ian here, we're playing a game of Halo while recording. 
That factors into our lives a bit, even though we haven't really played Halo much lately. They're playing Halo. I haven't played Halo since Halo 1, so... I don't you, know no, you haven't missed much <laughs> yeah. except for Halo 2, from what I hear. Stay stay <laughs> in that era. Don't get tainted by the game. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but back oh, then we couldn't change our helmets. Oh, no. Well, what yeah, no, it's a tragedy. Game? We were all stuck with the same helmet. Eh, losers. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty much all as far as our lives go. I guess we'll move on into our first. I always say that. Our second segment of the day the news. The news! In the news this week, we have Battlefield 4 announced. Forge Where's Islands. There's Lego. No one cares about Battlefield. There, yeah. There is no Lego news this week. I'm sorry. Forge <laughs> Island released surprisingly early, and that is for Halo 4. And then Terraria Xbox Edition discussion, because we got the game. Well, it's pretty fun. That's the news for this week. Start off. <laughs> Does anyone here really present? Well, you know, LJ. I know you, you and I have recently bought Battlefield Three, quite quite late. But we did. We did the game. Does anyone yeah. else here? Yeah. Uh, there's some there's some weird lag going on. Really? I'm not getting anything. <laughs> because it's from you. <laughs> well, I think You're right. I, I flipped the script. I'm oh, sorry. I flipped the switch. Go and stand by, bro. See, it's not lag. It's the audio from Ian that's taking Meso out. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But yeah. So basically, we're just blaming Ian. Hey, yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Play Battlefield. Why do you gotta blame my brother? Huh? Well, because maybe that person would be my brother, but we're not blaming blaming brothers. We're blaming you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what if you was your brother, you jerk? Man, well, he's you not. Hate. That's relevant. Thank you. Did That's someone just hate. ask me a question? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, Meso did. He asked if you played Battlefield. No, I play no console games. I've never actually owned a console, so. Wow. Oh, I was mainly asking, and... have you ever played a Battlefield game? Plus, they're mainly for the PC anyway. Hey, I wasn't blast. Oh. Well... Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> I think I played the Battlefield 1942 demo back in like 2002. Does that oh, count? Geez. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Was that, that 2002? I thought that was sooner. I, I don't know. Uh, all it was I much have is earlier, but yeah, didn't that come out like um, 1998? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 1942. I, I, I don't. I don't know, I give up. <laughs> the point of this question, I guess, this kind of falls on deaf ears here, but I'm still going to talk about it. Battlefield 4 was announced a while back because they were basically offering beta access as a bonus for pre-ordering Medal of Honor Warfighter. So, what a creative name. I don't know. Not only that, <clears throat> but anyone who is a Battlefield 3 premium member. Wait, what? Yeah, Speeder, my younger brother, told me about this a few days ago. Anyone who has pre-ordered or is a Battlefield 3 premium member. Like us? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm, well, Wait, what happens? <laughs> we get access to the Battlefield 4 beta. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because we have premium. You, you, you will Interesting. Choose, you know? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah, Battlefield 4 was announced with a 17-minute single-player campaign gameplay demo. Similar to how they announced Battlefield 3. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Could have been worse. I could have played the 2003 series. Okay. But... Sorry. He, he <laughs> was playing the TMNT um, theme song. Oh, okay. And I took away his phone. Wow. 
<laughs> well, he needs to be punished. I bet. <laughs> so, but yeah, Battlefield <laughs> Battle Four. The graphics are good. The They're kind of identical to Battlefield 3's in a lot of aspects. They do not really... Yeah, it doesn't really look like a big upgrade from Battlefield 3's, but then again, Battlefield 3 doesn't really need to be upgraded that much, because it honestly looks really good to me, so... Yeah. From what I saw. There were <laughs> scenes in the trail. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick <laughs> you in the house if you keep doing it. Ian? Yeah? You're talking over me. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan's being a, a little punk. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you, uh, possibly mute your mic when you're not talking? Maybe that, that might help. Or kill him. <laughs> you can kill Dylan, too. You know what? Killing him sounds so good right now. That sounds like a fun idea. Yeah. Alright, kid. Sorry. But yeah, it's Battlefield 4. If anyone cares, there will be a link to both the shortened trailer with good music and the 17-minute gameplay demo. <clears throat> There's really not much to say because they didn't actually show... Any multiplayer gameplay, and let's be honest, that's why people like Battlefield. <laughs> so, I guess, yeah, that's true. It's a situation where we don't really know much. Now, there's a rumor that we're actually going to see multiplayer gameplay tomorrow. But as to the validity of how true that is, I have no clue because I don't really follow the Battlefield community. I don't really know what sources have reported this or if it's reputable at all. So, you know, we'll see tomorrow, I guess, because that's what I'm interested in personally. Cooper is there's underwater combat battlefield four. So really? no way. So basically to clear up, you know, what uh, what Mesa is trying to say, you know, to clear it up for the listeners, basically nothing is happening this week and we're recording this anyway. You heard it here first, guys. Yeah. <laughs> there's a bunch of this stuff that sharp. just happened, but two out of three of these news pieces are stuff's got released and one of them is something which we already knew was existed got announced with a video of something not many people care about it is kind of <laughs> dull <laughs> and there's no lego news but we have to have a news segment so that settles that <clears throat> next up is right. one of the most one of the more interesting out of these three forge island which i believe we talked about last episode the free Halo 4 Forge map due for release on April 11th has gotten released early because they basically said we finished it, it's been certified, why on earth would we hold it out for another 12 days when we could just release it right now to kind of keep people entertained until the castle map pack. Yeah. Rather than delay it till after the castle map pack when no one's going to care about it because they'll be playing, guess what, castle Please, map pack. Please. So it came out. And VAR here is the only one that's put significant time into using it, and that was, like, just one map. Oh, she planned. So it falls on you to describe what it is, what you like about right. it, and what... Um, basically, Forge Island is, uh, it's a very large map reminiscent of, uh, Forge World from Halo Reach, except it is... Did we explain this in a past episode? Yeah, we, I, I, I was mainly talking about impressions and stuff. Oh, okay, impressions? Okay. It. Um, <clears throat> well, well, like I said, it's like a good large map from Forge World, uh, Forge World like, and in that aspect, it succeeds. It's huge. It offers a lot of playing area. Um, like this map honestly feels a lot larger than Forge it is. World. Yeah, it is. Um, however, there's not really anything in it, which is a good thing, because it means there's a lot more space to do whatever you want and. Now, my only gripe with this is that there's a lot of space, not much to do to fill it up. Because you're given the same budget that you're given with the, all the other maps, and it's really small. It's a very small budget. I know Vin and Keeney are going to argue with me about this, but the budget is incredibly small. And it's really hard to actually fill up or utilize all that space that you're given to its full extent. <clears throat> Impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> you, you made a structure that was that contained half the space of the of island. island. Of and one it, single island, it contained half the space. I used up half the budget. Now, yeah. earlier, before we started this uh, game, in fact, we, had, we invited everyone into this call to that map. And everyone started building a few things. Pretty sure all that was added was a few vehicles and a few platforms. And that alone took up, like, nearly all the budget. Yep. Wow. It's, it's really? It's been utilized a whole island, and the budget is almost completely gone. So, it really defeats the purpose of having such a huge map, really. 
Yeah. Yeah, it seems kind of worthless. Yeah. Overall sense. So there are that's forgers that are going to use it rather than creating large scale maps. They're going to use the flat space to make maps that they couldn't make on other locations because the terrain would interfere. And that will probably work out better. Because, yeah. But as far as... It's, uh, as far as, as, like, far, huge, as far as some huge maps like you would have seen in Halo 1, yeah, it's not going to be happening. <laughs> no. Unless you just make them all maps. flat with a couple pieces of terrain intermixed. Yeah. yeah, a base or two, which, uh, you know, I've long been yeah, for a long time. You're going to have to, like, time. sacrifice aesthetics over yeah. gameplay, which honestly isn't very pleasing to me because I like playing in games that are maps, maps that at least look nice, too. And the forged pieces in the game. map look nice, too. They're not all new, like I was led to believe originally, but there are a lot of new parts to it. Yeah. Some nice um, one thing I did notice, actually, was that while a lot of the parts aren't necessarily new, Pretty much all of them have been retextured to some degree. Yeah. So, yeah. It uses Ravine's palette, but it has a new... Yeah, like a new kind of... A new, a new coat of paint put over it. Yeah. And it has a Ravine <laughs> lighting, which is the best lighting. So, you know. Yeah. So. One thing so which is interesting about it, it's not just huge in the sense there are islands and there's water. The height of the map is also something to note. Yes. Someone it, made a video. The height <laughs> is massive. <laughs> I'm not sure. Did you see this video? How tall is Forge Island? I didn't see the video, but I've heard a lot of people like make estimate or like um, basically kind of document the actual height of it compared to every other map, and it's gigantic. LJ, or I would recommend watching that. It's 30 seconds. Skybox. Not at okay. the same time, but just to watch it. So, what I was thinking after watching this video is speed halo oh my man that would be interesting That'd huge be double the size speed halo oh my gosh <laughs> what speed halo is it's this long trench that goes diagonal and people are based at the bottom they i guess are the zombies and the people at top have these vehicles and they just drive down this trench and they respawn oh, you and me going that back. Reach one time. Yeah, that's speed Halo, and we keep going faster and faster and faster. Can you remember your pony, my little brother? <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I did. Well, and my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you just got wiped the floor with everybody. And... Yeah, I did. You know, it's, it's, yeah. that's how you do. Yeah, it's impressive. It's just the modding community is going to work around ways to extend the budget like they always do. It's just doing so is going to cause the map to glitch up like it always does, which is going to be unfortunate and kind of defeats the purpose. So are the Forge maps kind of like uh, Halo Custom Edition back in the day? Basically. It's sort of like that. It okay. comes with its own editor, and yeah, it's sort of like that. Drag and drop map editor. Yeah, of course. Gotcha. It's not as free as custom edition was. You can't like make whatever right. aesthetics you want. It's limited to a degree, but you have like a needle or like <laughs> That's your your Forge Island. Check it out. It it's Forge Island. What? Check it out. I was being talked over again. <laughs> that wasn't me this time. <laughs> yeah. It was Dylan. Yeah, but it was coming yeah. from your mic. Yeah, dude. So it's your responsibility. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but, yes, basically, Forge Island, check it out, completely free. Forge environment, I would go so far as to say it's the best out of the three we've got as far as freedom goes. I just wish the budget constraints were not so bad, but that being said, it's still cool, and I look forward to see what people do with it. Yep. So, all right. The final bit of news for the day is Terraria. For those that don't know... Yes. I have to put it in these terms, despite not liking doing so. It's basically a 2D Minecraft with RPG elements thrown in. That being so said, it deviates from the Minecraft formula quite a lot later in the game. When I say later in the game, I mean the first half of the game, which is what we have been playing since the game got released on consoles, is basically Minecraft. You build a shelter, protect yourself from the nighttime foes, mine for you know, minerals and make tools and all this. And we're pretty close to when the game starts expanding into a more RPG-ish kind of 
vibe, and I look forward to that. Basically, the game costs fifteen dollars, and it's on the PlayStation Network, and it's on Xbox. It's quite fun. I enjoy it a lot. Coming from a mine, uh, Minecraft guy, it's actually really good. Glad. So, it, if you if you like Minecraft, you'll definitely enjoy it. Let's play. Yeah. It's Elder. What are your thoughts on Terraria? You, you and I have actually played the PC version for quite a long time. Uh, I love Terraria. It's, it's a, lot a lot of fun. Lot of fun. At first, yeah. getting into it is kind of difficult because there's so much content. There's yeah. But, but Just... once you do, once you get a hang of it. It's a lot of fun. I'd say if you're just getting into it, that's like really nice because it's like the first getting into Minecraft. Yeah, there's a, there's a huge learning curve. That's the only issue. But it's a lot of fun once you do get it. That get feel home. when you get into a game like Minecraft for the first time and you have to learn everything. Yeah. At least with mine, or at least with this game, it actually gives you a tutorial. Yeah. Instead of just throwing you in there. But Vara, the wiki huh. will serve your needs. Oh, please. What's French for how do my tail legs look? We see French bread. It's a type of bread. Wait, oh, wait. I said, it? <laughs> it's a type of bread. But yes. A couple I'm really starting to regret bringing you here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Basically, it is... They basically kind of added in the console version of a PC, but the PC version actually ceased development earlier last year. Someone's typing rather loudly. That would be, um... Not me. No, that uh, that's would probably be me. Air. Yeah. Uh, I apologize, I didn't know my microphone was picking that up. No problem. <laughs> they basically added in a tutorial mode, a bunch of new items, <laughs> enemies, apparently a super secret, ultra powerful final boss of sorts, which I cannot wait to uncover. And then recently, before the game's release, they announced that the PC version is actually going to be resuming development. So we have That's the console the version. No, they stopped it about a year ago because the creator decided, I've done everything I want to do with this game. The console version's coming out. It's basically done. But now, console version's out. His mind has been changed, and he's gearing up for a new update for the PC version come A. Yeah, his mind got changed, all right. That paycheck sure now has a way with words. Yep. <laughs> he decided, why stop when they can make all this cash? I yeah, well, I wouldn't stop if I was making a ton of cash. Right? Yeah, pretty much. Basically, they're going to release this update for the PC, and it's going to be completely free, but the thing is, it's not going to be adding the Xbox Edition's content. It's going to be adding new content. So basically, if you want to get the full Terraria experience, the Xbox version costs fifteen dollars. The PC version is always on sale on Steam, and its price varies. I got it for basically two fifty, cost ten dollars, and I got it for four people. Oh no, I accidentally left the Halo part back up. But yes, that is the game. I would recommend purchasing it if you want my honest opinion. If we ever do a game night with fans, Terraria will likely be one of the games to play. Why not? It's only eight players, but, you know. It's a fun multiplayer game. It's fun in single player, too, but the fun really shines through. That is all. And that is actually all for the news as well. It's a pretty long news segment. That was... Yep. I will never no, that's standard. No. Never underestimate our abilities to talk about stuff that is not all that interesting at first glance. Call him yourself, Jay. Yeah. And now <laughs> and now we will move on to the final segment of the day. A segment which has not seen the light of day in quite a long time. Oh no. But this is a, a very Crap. epic moment to bring it out again. again. Prepare yourselves for brought to attention. Oh, God. <laughs> this means everyone... We have to mute for this, right? No. Okay. Okay, so... So what are, what are we bringing to attention? Silence yourself. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, hello and welcome to the return of the long forgotten and abandoned segment brought to attention. Today we will be spotlighting a rather interesting thing that's been going on with our buddy Air over here. Woo. He has been coming up with a bunch of ideas for Bionicle Hero Factory related projects to do with his custom masks. And rather than do another interview, which we've done every single time he's been on, I decided what I'll do them. we rather just directly <laughs> talk to, about his, your projects, what you've been doing, give links to them, and discuss them in finer detail. So, Alrighty. just as a bit of a background to this, Air's sure. been on our podcast twice, and both times he's discussed his shop, Vols Forge and Foundry, long-running custom mask shop. Uh, it's my understanding people can still submit orders to you, correct? They can. Um... Just because I've had a lot of real life stuff going on, as you all know, um, you know, I was badly injured in a car wreck last year. Life's just been crazy. So I still take orders, but only when people contact me and I can work something out with them. So I haven't had an actual like storefront where I'm taking orders, you know, uh, like I used to back a few years ago. But I'd like to return to that. Yeah. Basically, it is my understanding that you have five projects here to talk about today, and I'm going to mm. put the floor up to you to talk about each one in succession, because I think it's more appropriate coming from you than it is from <laughs> me. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, what I'm looking at, uh, back when I started the Forge and Foundry, I was just doing stuff for myself, and people liked it, and they're like, hey, can you make me one? <laughs> and so then I started doing stuff for other people, and it just kind of ballooned from there. And like I said, then things got crazy the last few years. Bionicle ended. BZ Power went down for months at a time. It's just been, you know, really rough and tumble. Um, so what I'm looking at now, rather than just providing some, you know, pretty basic custom services to the community, I'm looking at bigger projects that can really, uh, a word I use a lot is revitalize, you know, really get people interested and, you know, get them wanting to do stuff. Um... So I have five projects that I've sort of worked out, and these are very much just their ideas. I haven't done anything yet, so um, other than just trying to figure out how I would do them. Uh, the first one I talked about last time, which is what I call Vol Pattern Armor and Weapons for Hero Factory. Um, the way I look at it, I really like the Hero Factory... Um, standardized system. skeleton thing that they got going on. Yeah. What's that? The build system, they call it. Yeah. Up, oh, like is static there, is coming in from somewhere. somewhere. Who's that coming from? Uh, I blame you. Uh, Damn it! <laughs> no one's been, no one's appearing on Skype, but there's awful static. Okay, it's gone. Uh, yeah, it went away. It's my understanding it's called the character and creature uh... I don't know. It's, it's something along those lines. Character and creature build system. Let me find yes, out. I've... But it, while, while I'm finding out, continue. Okay. I actually have a question. Do they still have the thing where they have all the parts and you can build your own and order it and they'll mail it to you? No. That got uh... canned a while ago because no one was buying stuff from it because they decided they'd charge $15 per uh -huh. hero despite there being only one custom painted part. That was, that was uh, optional, so it did not really go over well. What they've replaced it with hmm. is they, they basically made a program, and it was 3D, and it was on uh, the Hero Factory website, and it was basically a 3D okay, mock yeah. builder that you could not buy yeah. stuff from. Gotcha. And, I, then, and then in the latest website update, they actually removed that from their servers with no mention. Oh. So it does not actually Man. exist anymore. And what they've replaced oh. that with is they, they, they've, they've made their presence on Lego Digital Designers stronger. And they have basically mm -hmm. a lot of, the, a lot of if not all, of the current parts from Hero Factory on the service you just can't order. So gotcha. it's a mock okay. builder, but yeah, okay, continue. Gotcha. Uh, just a second. Okay. I did actually find out the name of the Hero Factory build system. It is the okay, Character and Creature Building System. That's okay. a cumbersome name. I prefer standardized skeleton, personally. <laughs> okay, so basically what I was going on to say is what I'm looking at is how to 
uh, use design cues, particularly from Halo, since I know there's a huge Halo uh, Lego crossover. The fact that you're all playing Halo right now kind of, you know, speaks to that. Yeah. Um, so what I want to do is use resin casting to design new armor pieces that will snap onto the uh, standardized skeleton. Um, that will evoke some of the feel of Halo armor and like uh, I don't know if they started it with Halo 3 or Halo Reach or what but where you have like the basic armor and then you have the EVA and Grenadier and all it the was other Halo adaptions. 3 that started that but really what you're playing okay. of is more like Halo Reach where they had this basic set of armor yeah. and then they had a, additions to it and it reflected on your Spartan rather than swapping out for a different armor set entirely it would just kind of yeah. build upon it yeah, that, that's what I'm looking for, is to, to improve the basic, really bland shells that they've been using for years now, and then uh, put uh, armor adaptions on top of that, and that's what I'm calling uh, vault, vault pattern uh, armor, and eventually um, I'd like to add weapons to that, but I'm still uh, working on that. Uh, what do you guys think? Any input? I'm loving that idea, personally. That's, that's, among that's my a favorite. really cool idea. Because I can see that working very well, considering the HF kind of armor thing. The only tricky yeah. part is going to be designing pieces that evoke that look that actually fit within the part constraints of already existing shells. Like, are you talking about uh, snap-on shells or the uh, double-pin attachments that you put on the existing shells? Uh, I'm talking about both, basically, in that okay. what I'm looking at, in order to avoid any sort of copyright infringement, what I'm doing is taking the uh, the basic hand pieces that were on the sets for years and years, that basic connector, yeah, and making something that will actually glue mm -hmm. onto that, and then that will pop oh. onto the standardized skeletons. And from there, the extra, you know, armor bits will glue on top of the resin piece that glues onto the clip bit that goes onto the standardized skeleton. All I'm going to say about that is that's going to be a bit difficult because that piece sticks out further than you may think. When you yeah, I've already... That on. I've done some testing to it. Um, because the biggest thing is is that with the resin casting that I'm going to be using, I do need a good foundation to mount it on. I'm actually going to be cutting the end piece that sticks out off of it. So mm. that'll give cool. me more room to work with. Um, but anyway, so and part of that is that Halo armor, you know, there's all these little glowy panels. I've been looking into um, uh, some really strong industrial strength glow-in-the-dark stuff to try to get that effect. And if this work, if this takes off and people like it, I'll look into doing the same for uh, villains, basically. Um, and nice. I have a little bit of backstory written up to explain it all away, but whatever. We can touch on that some other time. Yeah. So that's project number one that I've already spent like an hour talking about. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, project two, which we also touched on last time, is... Pretty straightforward, just redesigned Toa, Fantaka, and Mystica. I still don't like those names, but that's just me. <laughs> um, They're pretty stupid names. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Hey, the, the names are better than the sets they came out with. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so basically, uh, BZP member... Well, I don't know his actual BZP name, I just know him as Dracone. But uh, you guys touched on his redesigns last time. I've been in touch with him. He's going to try to get his redesigns for the other characters to me. Um, and basically, when he was doing his redesigns, he made up this list of stuff that would need to be repainted and stuff that would need to be made from scratch. And, you know, I'm, I'm capable of doing that. So I'm looking at doing that, providing that, and basically I would provide the custom parts and then, uh, you know, people can provide their own parts to finish out the build and, you know, we would provide instructions and all that. Instructions and parts. <clears throat> Excuse me, parts lists. That is my favorite out of the ideas you've presented. Because <laughs> making custom parts is loved by all. Let's face mm -hmm. it, that's something people unanimously enjoy. But mm -hmm. the, the hate towards those particular sets, if that could be eradicated in some form by offering an alternative. Yeah. <laughs> Put that to rest uh, yeah. after all this time. That would be... Amazing. That could actually work out. Well, 
I, I actually I realized something else earlier today that the when I made my argument back in 2008 for how they could have you know because I've I've been on this for a long time how they could have uh, made those sets better. One of the arguments that Greg Farshti uh, took up against me was like, we don't want to resell anything that looks anything like anything we've already sold. Hmm. So that's why the masks didn't look the same and the characters weren't the same colors. But if you look at Hero Factory, where, you know, Breeze, Inferno, and all of them have basically the same molds year after year, you know, it kind of blows that line. Same, out of literally time. the exact same helmets were used for one Yeah, exactly. Day. So, you know, that, that, that logic just it doesn't hold one. No. So there, there was really no need for the Fantaka and Mystica to look the way they did. And as you say, they're universally hated. So, Well, some people enjoy the set. I do not think there is... There are many people that would prefer those versions to alternatives that could possibly evoke the original characters they, better. That's just the thing. is They, they don't look like the characters they're supposed to be. I know, L, they L, I know LJ and quite a few others enjoy the sets as sets and hmm. do not actually dislike them, right, LJ? That's correct. I like them as sets, but they're not very good iterations of their prior selves. I think Golly was always my, my real sticking point. I don't know, but I won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, what's your third project? Third project is something really off the deep end. Um, uh, something I've been involved in for a while now is model railroading, and my big thing in model railroading is doing the scenery, you know, making realistic scenes with little trains to run through. I'm also an avid tabletop wargamer, and um, I enjoy having, you know, nice scenery to play the game on. So I've been looking at how to incorporate that into... Um, into the Lego fan base, and that any you remember the old like uh, uh, back when Lego Magazine was Lego Mania Magazine, and they had, they'd have the little cartoons in it. Vaguely. Okay, that was a long time ago. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, we're all old here. In our own special. <laughs> well, maybe me, but some yeah. older than others. <laughs> How old are you, Alex? I'm 21. Oh, I'm older than anyone here. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, sucks to be you, man. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but anyway, so what I'm looking at, uh, as I was saying before about trying to, you know, breathe some life into the community, the fan base, you know, they are, you know, people like me, we may still, you know, have a lot of nostalgia and stuff, but, you know, we're in college now. We aren't playing, you know, just playing with Legos and stuff. So what I'm looking at is something that can provide, basically what I call it is, Scenery and backgrounds, where basically I would be providing a three-dimensional scene to display figures, and this could be system or Bionicle or Hero Factory or anything like that, um, to display, you know, your creations, your old sets, stuff like that. So um, an example I thought of to use is if you remember back at the end of 2002 in the uh, Templar films where the Chronicler and... All of them were in Gakoro, you know, about to be taken out by the Barak, and they're all standing in front of the shrine there. You know, that's something that I could quite easily recreate that entire scene, put the sets in it, and, you know, you have a complete scene put on your shelf, uh, and look at how awesome it is. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to cross my skills with, you know, doing the scenery and stuff with the Lego community and you know we'll see where it goes that's what you need to do I'd imagine that one would be the most <laughs> difficult out of the ones you've mentioned it, thus far it's I don't know honestly I think I don't know it, it's all a mixed bag because the other if that you know if I can make that work out where I want to take that was start um, appealing to uh, people who do brick films I know yes. there's, you know, a ton of people on YouTube who do Bionicle stop motion on their kitchen floor. Huh. <laughs> um, but, uh, and sh try to make basically sets to film either Bionicle or even system brick films to make them look really good. Um, if you haven't seen it already, look up uh, America Outlawed. It's a half hour long uh, Lego system western uh, brick film, and it is, it's awesome. I don't know. I, I don't have enough good things to say about it. It's really great. Um, yeah. I've actually heard of that before. 
I've never actually it's watched the, it, but the name rings a bell. I know. I think I know what you're talking. The, about. And, and he 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 uses some props and stuff that are not actually Lego, and it works out great. So that that's what I'm trying to do is provide options to the community so that you know uh, there's just more people doing more stuff, more creative stuff, and just. Yeah. The thing with the community is that these creative projects all fall into like one of two categories. And it's like you either it's either some kind of story, it's like an RPG mm. or a multi chapter story, or it a an MOC. And then there's comics, but I'm not gonna go there. Create <laughs> creative forms of Lego related media are very limited, I'll put it to you that way. And all of this stuff oh, you're talking man. about is fresh. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I'm trying to provide. Because uh, something that I'd like to touch on here is that there's a couple of guys by the name of Steve the Squid and Mr. Cod who've opened up a shop very much like, you know, what what I started out doing. Um, and they're they're pretty good, you know. I, I really give them a lot of credit. Uh, but they put right in their store that, you know, they credit me for inspiring them. And, you know, to me, I find that really cool, a little humbling, you know, that... Uh, my work is inspiring other people to you know, push their limits and be creative, too. And that's yep. just you know, really satisfying. Mm -hmm. It's a nice sense of tribute. Yeah. I mean, hey, I, I made a difference, and if I make a difference, you know, I'm happy. So. All right. Uh, so Project anyway, 4. Project 4. This one's kind of a pet project of mine. Um, I don't know if any of you have watched the uh, Stars series Spartacus. Or if oh you yeah, have, I, have. Like, I have not. Okay, I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of the first season. It's very unfortunate that uh, Andy Whitfield passed away. Um, it, it'd be a whole different show if he was still with us. But anyway, um, basically what I'm looking to do is take uh, the Glatorian, and I don't really know how the community feels about them. I've seen some negative Divided. vibes, or whatever. Yeah, I <laughs> like them personally. I Me thought too. it was fresh. It was fun. I, I really like the Glatorian. Var here uh, does not. Mm. What? Wait, what? Glatorian. Mm. You do not enjoy them. I like the Glatorian. No. You didn't no. like... No, that's me who doesn't. Uh, shut down. No. Well, I, I didn't like the, the, the line as a whole. I like the Glatorian. I like the actual excuse. sets. Just I just didn't... Excuse. <laughs> yeah, so shut up. Well, anyway, kind of like uh, the Project 3 with the scenery and backgrounds, I'm kind of going into, you know, a shot in the dark here and something that just hasn't been done before. And I know people are going to be like, you're dressing them up like dolls. But anyway, <laughs> um, if you go into a store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, any place like that, you'll see a lot, lot of stuff uh, that's meant for jewelry making and things like that. You'll uh, fake fur, leather cords, um, chains, stuff like that. So what I'm looking at is to draw inspiration from the costuming from the Stars Spartacus series, adapt that over to the Glatorian, and try to give them arms and just, just basically make them look like total barbarians. That um, could be interesting, actually. It, it's it's a shot in the dark. I'm going to have to do it and see how it actually looks on the set, because there, there's nothing to go by here. Not, no one else has tried anything like that. So. Could be pretty jarring with the aesthetic of Lego pieces, but it could also work well. Who knows? Yeah, it, it, I think it's really going to depend how, how, just how, you know, how I do it. On top of that, I was never really happy with how few Glatorian helmets are actually out there, so that's something I would certainly like to try to expand. You mean, um, you mean, uh, you mean how they'd reuse a lot of the helmets for characters? Yeah, the, yeah, I mean, I like the way they went to the really small head on, you know, it looked made the body look more massive rather than the older, you know, bigger heads. But there, there's just so few Glatorian helmets because that only ran for one year, so there's just not a lot of variety. Yeah. Um, and another thing, if you watch the uh, Legend Reborn film, that's oh, what it's oh called. Right? Just, yeah. just bear with me, bear with me. <laughs> um, like, keep it going, keep it going. <laughs> Ak Akar's sword before it uh, turned into Tahu's sword. Um, Yes. It's kind of a cool design. It's got, you know, the curved blade, uh, you know, curved old Greek blade. Reminded me of a Knight's Kingdom sword. Mm. Yeah, kind of. Um, 
I'd like to also expand the weapons and perhaps touch on some of the more traditional gladiatorial, uh, you know, the big squared, uh, square shields and the more traditional, uh, gladius weaponry, stuff like that. So I would just like to say, I love yeah. that comparison you made. Okay. Which one? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Which one, LG? Tahu's sword. Oh, yeah. yeah. It did turn into Tahu's sword. I was like, oh, well. He, I mean, funny. Quite, He's quite literally, stars. it turned yeah. into Tahu Star's sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that too. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, but anyways, yeah. that's that's Project uh, Four, and Project Three and Four kind of play into Project Five, which is not actually a custom. It's a community activity that I've been kicking around for like three years now, and never actually did anything with. Um. I ran this past Meso, and he seemed to really like it. But anyway. Yep. Uh, basically, I've been involved in online um, Warhammer uh, campaigns for quite some time now. Big, involved role-playing deals with, like, hundreds of players, and it, it's, it's pretty intense. Uh, my concept is to take something similar like that, similar to that, and bring it over to BZP and to the fan base. Um... Uh, basically, the project storyline, I call it uh, Treachery and Greed. Uh, it would be an interactive story set 15,000 years before um, when Matanui and the whole movie and all that happened. So, you know, Akar would still be at the pinnacle of his career. Uh, Jelu would still be a Gatorian. Um, you know, a lot of stuff that's been hinted at would be, you know, common. Um, and anyway, so basically the storyline would be that, uh, Meth has found some, uh, fabled artifacts of Vol out in the desert, so now everyone's scrambling to go, you know, claim these for themselves, kind of a gold rush scenario, so all the villages are trying to, you know, get the goods to improve their lot, and, uh... Hunt for uh, gold. Yeah. Gotcha. So basically, the B BZP members would take the role of an Agori recruiter, like Metis is. Um, you would come up with a... The, the players, the members, would come up with a, a group that they would role-play that would go out into the desert and look for these artifacts. And at the same time, the village champions would be fighting back in the arenas for the rights to these artifacts and, you know, supplies and things like that that would affect... Uh, the people out on the frontier, and you know what they do out on the frontier, would affect the big arena battles. And the arena battles would actually be re uh, picture stories with, you know, the Project Three scenery and the Project Four, you know, uh, Glatorian armor and weaponry and stuff like that. So there'd be a very visual element with it. Yeah. Um, and players could, you know, uh, buy new armor and new training for their champions or, you know, keep their money for themselves. And they can bet on, you know, the champ the arena battles. And the way I would work it out is that I would use an actual Warhammer gaming system to fight those out. So, you know, uh, everything is pretty much random. It would literally be, you know, however these rounds would go out. So there would be, you know, a really big random uh actual arena element to how it would play out and that's just you know get people involved get people uh just doing stuff that's the kind of thing i think can go over well because people love rpg-esque things but they're usually fairly cookie well, cutter it makes yeah. them feel involved yeah and they, they pull their two cents worth in it exactly yeah. it's an interactive thing but all the rpgs around the community obviously people do different stories and whatnot and they do different things but they're all they all follow the same basic pattern and what yeah, you're proposing that, sounds very that's what i'm fresh. looking at is to, yeah to break out of that where you know as basically a team manager you know you have uh your characters out in the deserts and you know they can uh get into fights with other people's uh you know expeditions they can get attacked by, you know, the dangers out on the frontier. And at the same time, you know, you're having to manage your money and bet, you know, are you going to bet on your champion? Are you going to bet against your champion? Are you just going to bet on everyone and, you know, <laughs> uh, see what happens? Yeah. Um, 
so j- just to take some uh, control away from the players and just introduce a really random element. And I think that would probably, you know, just get a lot of people interested if it actually takes off. Yeah. All of these ideas combined could do wonders. But my That's concern, take, my uh, concern is how <laughs> this is going to be so much work, and then how long is it actually going to take to even get one of them up off the ground, let alone all five? Yeah. I'm 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 very much aware of that. That's uh, <laughs> you can insane. do it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but I I just wanted to throw that out there. You know, let uh, get it out there. Uh, see what you guys think of it, and just you know. Uh, as far as the um, b- bionicle Spartacus, I like yeah. that idea. I love that idea. Actually, <laughs> it's just, it sounds very appealing. Yeah. Especially yeah. for someone who's seen the show, which. Let me tell you, it's nothing but um, <laughs> a lot of blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, come on! By by the time we get to season three, they're actually pretending to wear some semblance of armor. I've seen some bits of season three. I haven't gotten past episode five yet. Gotcha. I haven't watched you any have of it. I've just any concept pictures of your ideas that I could maybe throw up on the video. Not yet, but uh, I can yeah. I can provide them sooner or later. Okay. Because yeah, that that's a big thing is that these these are all ideas. Um, you know, I put a lot of thought into the ideas, but the time and effort and just, just it, it's, it's going to be a big undertaking. Do one at a time. That's my obvious advice. Pick one and yeah. run with it. And I would personally, as a, as the one to focus on, it's my it's my advice that you should do the Toa Dupa. You make mm. beforehand. Well, maybe, yeah. that's just personal bias because that's the coolest to me personally. No, it's it's uh, that's fair to say certainly. Like that, that, I think that would probably make the biggest splash. The most yeah. people would be like, cool. Um, Definitely. Well, uh, all right. That that's all we got. So I've talked long enough now. Yeah. I'll go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> go, to bed. go to bed. Very, <laughs> very bed. awesome ideas. I'm pumped. They seem awesome. really cool. I'm pumped. Get hype. Get hype. Okay, that is the yep. end of brought to attention. If you have any, if you, you remember, if you have a mask request for Air of the Chronicler, send him a PM on his YouTube channel, and maybe you can work something out. If although, if you're gonna be one of those people who who whines about things or, or says first die yeah. <laughs> you are not Thank welcome you. Yeah. screw you LJ <laughs> thanks for listening to me ramble on I'm gonna get some sleep now <laughs> oh, yeah, right. you, were, you earned it dude yes thank you for being on and thank you all for, listening. for watching Mardi Gras Mardi Gras <laughs> Holy crap. Thank you all for listening to TTV episode 62. <laughs> I'm messing up. Awesome. Wait, no, 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 no. Not my name just yet. I forgot. Be sure to rate, like, subscribe, comment, favorite, share, upvote, uh, tweet, follow, tweet, upload, vlog, <sighs> follow, <laughs> nerf, <laughs> Facebook. I don't know how to. Facebook. But they don't really have Kill any Facebook. What about your tweet? <laughs> I'm messing up. I'm Votoran. I'm LJ. I'm Tenebrae Invictus. I'm Ian. I'm Dylan. <laughs> I'm Air. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>